In a surprising interview, head of Microsoft Xbox department Phil Spencer was talking about the future of game consoles. And you would expect when asked whether or who the biggest competitor is, you would think it would be Sony. After all, Sony has been number one for pretty much the entire eighth generation of consoles. Sony was the one that Microsoft wanted to take the crown away from after the PlayStation 2 utterly trounced the Xbox and the GameCube and Dreamcast for that matter. And Microsoft did it with the Xbox 360, but that was largely because the PlayStation 3 was super expensive and difficult to program for. You would think that as the PlayStation 4 took the crown back and away from Xbox One and Nintendo Switch, you would think Sony would be who Microsoft wanted to be. But no. In an interview, um, Phil Spencer actually said that Google Stadia, not Sony, was their main competition going forward. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Apptrepreneur. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here and you happen to really like this video, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification. We upload videos on a near daily basis and we do news, editorials, long rants, interviews, premieres, live streams, and you will want to be notified of all of that because it's all good? No, I can't say that was a straight face. It's mostly good. I, I flub once in a while, but hey, we try to keep things interesting. So anyway, let's talk about Google Stadia. I talk about Google Stadia quite a bit because unlike most game consoles, Google Stadia is an app. It's an actual app. Therefore, as the app entrepreneur, I get to talk about it. But I've not been very kind to, to Google Stadia. Again, I, I, I've reiterated over and over again that the concept both rubs me the wrong way from a phil a core philosophical belief that you should own your games and not rent them to also being this is a neat idea a really neat idea and i kind of want to see where they go with it and i try to avoid talking about too many of the negative articles i i do unfortunately have to talk about some because there's a lot of them but I don't think I'm going to be rich becoming a Google Stadia basher, especially since, by all accounts, it's not going to last very long. Unless you're the head of Microsoft, or Microsoft's Xbox division, I should say. Because Phil Spencer, who is overall a genuinely good guy, I believe, and very smart, by the way, he was doing an interview, and he had this to say when someone asked um, who their big competitor is. He said, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony... We have a ton of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. That's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but the traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. I guess they could try to recreate Azure, but we've invested tens of billions of dollars in cloud over the years. Now, this is an interesting quote, and there's actually a lot more being said in it than upon first glance. Because I know that some Stadia fans, and they I'm not saying they don't have a right to feel this way, just to let you know, will take this as proof that Google Stadia is not a failure, that a lot of people are getting into it, that Microsoft sees its success. That's not what this means. <laughs> Google Stadia's numbers, by all account, are poor. I'm sorry, they just are. And yet, here is Microsoft giving credence. But here's the thing, out of all the major game companies out there, at least the three main ones that we've had for a long time, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, I think Microsoft is by far the closest to wanting to go all digital, all cloud in the future. Remember, when they announced the Xbox One, originally it was going to be a streaming only device. You would have discs, of course, but you would pop the disc into the console it would install it would register to that device and then the disc was useless you couldn't lend it out there was no used games market i mean if you gave away your copy of the game and that disc was popped into another console they would charge a reactivation fee to install on that device it was basically their way of cutting out the used games market and it did not go over well at all to the point that xbox definitely backtracked very, very fast. However, Microsoft, out of all of them, have been the most bullish about having a digital-only console. 
So much so that they actually released an Xbox One S device, which was an all digital. Um, yeah. Oh wait, I got to backtrack. They released the Xbox One S all digital console, aka Xbox Sad. Xbox One Sad. So you know, people are still not happy about it. And there are rumors that their Series X console, it's going to have a couple different versions. There's going to be the high-powered one, which has the disk drive, can play the Ultra HD movies and all that jazz. And there's going to be like a cheaper device that has no disk drive and it's all digital. And people use that as proof that all the video game um, companies are going to go all digital. Now, they would like to. I'm not going to say that they don't. But here's the thing. The reason Microsoft is trying to go all digital more than the others is because they're an American company. And America, you know, there's, we're starting to see people in America go all digital on many things. A lot of people stopped buying CDs a long time ago. I still do. Not many anymore, but I still do. Some people don't buy Blu-rays anymore. They prefer to just stream their movies on Netflix and Disney+. Plus. And so it stands to reason that gamers in America would probably be the most forthright about a digital-only future. And that is why Microsoft is all about digital. They are creating their xCloud streaming service. They are investing billions into streaming. And so when they say they are concerned about Amazon and Google, it's because Amazon and Google are also focusing on all digital futures. Now, why are they not concerned about Nintendo and Sony? Frankly, it's because Nintendo and Sony are Japanese companies. Now, this is not a slight against the Japanese. However, Japan is very traditionalist. If you go to Japan, you would be surprised how many things we have here that never really caught on over there, like laptops, for example. Laptops mean something very different in Japan. They aren't considered portable computers. They're considered electric typewriters. The idea of having a personal computer isn't really a thing. I mean, you have like a desktop in some cases, but Japanese people don't have like a bunch of tablets and stuff just for fun. It's for school and work. And the Japanese otaku like to buy really expensive collections and games with the figurines and everything. And they have not embraced digital the way most other parts of the country have. Since Sony and Nintendo are based in Japan, they are not going to ruffle those feathers too much. They're going to put disk drives in their devices until there are signs that Japan is willing to go with them on an all-digital future. Microsoft has never been particularly big in Japan. The Xbox, look, they keep it there. They keep trying. It's objectively been a failure this entire time. The only reason they don't leave the market, I believe, is because they don't want to admit defeat, which is admirable, I will say. So the Xbox Series X will go to Japan. It won't sell very well, but it will go there. Now my seam is popping up for some reason. So for Microsoft, Japan's kind of a lost cause. America is where it's all about. They see Americans wanting instant access to things, you know, being able to have as much content as they want, on as many devices as possible. And that's one of the reasons Xbox spearheaded the Xbox Anywhere initiative, where it's like, hey, our games are going to be on PC and the system on the same day. We want the Xbox app to be the focus, not the Xbox console. Frankly, Microsoft would like to be done making those machines. And so they that's why they are pushing, because... Microsoft is coming from an American mentality where we're getting rid of our disks, we're getting rid of our hardware, and they want to be on all the devices. So in that regard, Nintendo and Sony is no threat to them. They're not investing nearly as much as Microsoft is. However, Google obviously is serious about it. They have Stadia, and Amazon, they're creating a streaming platform for games as well. So that is probably why Phil Spencer has singled them out. So again, let's go over this again. This quote does not mean Google Stadia is a success. I mean, 
I, I did like a little debate with X Cloud Gaming, and we said we'll meet together after one year of our conversation, see where Stadia is. I'm going to be really curious to see where Stadia is and what we'll be talking about on that point. I really will be, because it's not doing very well. But Microsoft did give them a little bit of validation, and, you know, I, I think if Microsoft does release their X Cloud and it becomes like a big success, that might actually be like a good thing for Stadia. Because Google might be able to like say, hey, we've got one of these things too, and maybe they can offer a better deal. I don't know. But I just found it interesting that after all this time, Microsoft isn't considering Sony their huge competitor. They're considering Google and Amazon. That, that speaks volumes about where gaming is heading in America. But that's where we are going to leave it. What do you folks think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.